mention Al- Alfred Hitchcock. Probably when I, when I think of the your movies, the scene that is most Hitchcockian would be a scene that I think of whenever I'm driving somewhere and the weather's bad, which is that crash scene in Body Parts, um, which is, you know, because it, it presents the problem. Everyone can see what's going to happen, and then you just wait for it to happen yep. in, in anticipation. And uh, I always found that to be just an incredibly executed uh, scene. And from what I understand, that not all the cameras were going when you filmed the, the ultimate crash. Was that right? Well, all the cameras were going all right. They just didn't catch it. We had nine cameras in that scene uh, because, you know, it was shot in, in, I shot it in about two and a half days on a section of freeway in Toronto that was under construction. So we were able to close it and, and own it and just put on AD cars. And, you know, we had a very, very qualified stunt team on the movie. And uh, I had nine cameras. Um, but it was shot in sections. You know, it was shot the uh, the car losing its wheel in front of Jeff Fahey's car, his skidding to a stop, stop, the uh, the truck rear-ending him, him going through the windshield, and then the final section. We were shooting all of this sequentially. Was um, basically the the truck was going to push his car into the back of a car we had we had placed on the freeway. It was very and it was done at a very slow speed. Um, and the stuntman was standing on the hood of the car and he, uh, on the roof of, of the middle car and uh, was basically just supposed to jump over the top of the, the one car. But the stunt went a little off. Not We we rehearsed it. We were very, we were very safe. Um, but it, it happens. And the car flipped. So the nine cameras I had covering it, nobody was expecting the car to, to actually flip on end and throw the stuntman. Um and so at the end of the, after it was over, of course, the first thing is, you know, are you okay? And the stuntman got up and waved. And was, um, but then you, you turn to your camera operators, and we all knew we had seen one of the best stunts probably anybody's ever caught on film. It was so hair-raising. And one after the other, I remember the looks. The camera operators shook their heads. We didn't get it. And we, we, were supposed, we were just supposed to be shooting straight ahead. And as it turned out, um, I had a couple of cameras in kind of like reinforced housings inside the various vehicles. And those were the shots that we we got. And one high angle uh, from a, uh, on a, on a platform. And fortunately we had the, between those three shots, we had the whole scene. And it's uh, in fact, even better because you're right inside the, you know, inside the wreck while it's happening. It was a lucky accident. It, it turned out great on film, that's for sure. Um, but uh, would you say body parts, you, you, you know, you've got Bad Moon, which is your werewolf movie. Let's say Near Dark's your vampire movie. 100 Feet's your ghost movie. Is is body parts your Frankenstein movie? Body parts. Well, I suppose you could say that. It's it's a transplant movie. But, yeah, it was, um, you know, it, it, it was in the land of, of Frankenstein limbs being taken off and sewn back on and put back together. Um, and I saw the opportunity in the novel to do both a psychological thriller and also a gore movie at a time when, you know, they weren't doing all, they weren't doing any of them at the studios in, in those days. So it was, it was, again, it was a kind of a wild movie to get through the studio system. Um, no, but, uh, yeah, so yeah, I suppose you could you could dub it as it's in the land of Frankenstein's and, and labs and mad doctors and you know I mean the biggest example that I had was with Body Parts where we made the movie and we had, we had a we, we did actually have a big Paramount release with that and two weeks before the movie came out they caught Jeffrey Dahmer so <laughs> and then Paramount pulled the ads in Milwaukee where the movie was so it became front page news. And there was a public identification with the movie and Jeffrey Dahmer, which, of course, is absolutely ridiculous. You know, cause... And look at how they like Jeffrey Dahmer now <laughs> with this Netflix show. Uh, but, you know, I mean, part one of the great things about Blu-ray and before that cable is that it gave chances. The Hitcher didn't do very well when it came out, you know, but it was discovered on HBO. You know, I mean, there's so many there's so many ways now that uh, from disc to, you know, streaming that um, audiences can can find find movies that they may have missed before. That I, I've been very lucky in that I've had a couple of my films like Body Parts and Bad Moon really get discovered with their with their Blu-ray releases. 
well, just trying to give Scream Factory some ideas on a box set, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, as we kind of wrap up here, I'm just wondering, just just someone uh, that's that's into movies like you, just a, as a fellow fan of movies, what are some of your favorite movies that? What do you pop on on the weekend? You know, when you're hanging out with your buddies. Well, let's see. Uh, the buddy was over just recently. Let's see. We watched um, The Devil Rides Out. I'm a big Hammer fan. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, we watched The Incredible Shrinking Man, which, believe it or not, I only just discovered. Dude, that movie that movie is awesome. That's great. That is, like, one of the best 50s movies ever. I mean, it, it may be the best science fiction movie I've ever seen. I mean, it, it, it's a film... Like, it, and it's a perfect example. I mean, it's a movie that, yes, it has a science fiction concept. The guy's shrinking and shrinking and shrinking to the point where he's soon fighting spiders with a pen. But the movie has this huge emotional arc. And it's a film of ideas, you know? I mean, I, 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 I was absolutely blown away when I saw it. It was all part of the conception, of course, that this guy is, like, when he's a regular guy, his life's kind of trivial. But as the smaller he gets and the more... He, the more he becomes a mythical hero, you know, he actually increases in stature as a human being as the, you know, through his bravery and his courage and his resourcefulness as the, as the movie progresses. And, you know, I love Richard Mouse. You know, Duel was a big influence on my work. And, you know, he, he had a incredible ability, the author, to have, to take a, a, a very, very clean, simple confrontation, Duel being the ultimate example, you know, where, there's no backstory. There's no subplots. He sets up a situation, you know, and, and Duel, brilliantly directed by Steven Spielberg, of course, you know. Uh, but, sure. you know, the whole show basically says this whole movie is going to be this guy and, and this truck. And it's going to keep you interested. And it does. It, it has enough. It's such a challenging thing to do because you have to keep the complications going. And I thought that Shrinking Man had a lot of those virtues. Everyone, please check out Eric's work and his novels. He's got a great imagination. You can certainly escape in his work, so be sure to check it out. And so thanks again, Eric. Thanks, Mike. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.